Hey, what is up guys? So today I will be showing you how to fix the code P0456 on a 2015 Dodge Dart. First, you're gonna know what the code actually means. And the code P0456 means you have a small leak on your EVAP system. Now, what does that mean? Now, what that means is that you're losing pressure or you're losing gases on your fuel system. Now, the EVAP system captures all the fuel vapors from the fuel tank and sends them to the engine intake in order to ignite in a normal combustion process. When there's a small leak in a Dodge Dart EVAP system, it will throw a P0456 code. Now that could also be related to the P0455, which it means you have a bigger leak. Now besides your check engine light coming on, the other symptoms you might experience is that your Dart is gonna keep saying that you have a loose gas cap. Replacing the gas cap is probably one of the cheapest ways you can get rid of the code. Uh, now to make it easy for all of you Dart owners, what you wanna do is you wanna go to AutoZone and get the 6837T gas cap. Now so far my car hasn't thrown the light ever since. Now replacing your gas cap is probably one of the simplest things you can do. As you can see here I have the new one. It's brand new, just a couple days old. You only have to take the old one off and screw the new one in. Make sure it clicks and you're good to go. Now, if that doesn't fix your issue, the next thing you can do is replace the EVAP purge valve. Now, this one will cost you about $60 at AutoZone. The part number is PV631, and that's uh, specifically for the 2015 Dodge Dart. If you have any other cars, then you go to AutoZone and you look for the right EVAP purge valve for your car. P0456 and P0455 are going to be the same universal codes for any type of car that you have. So, this is going to be the same process for any car that you have. You're going to have to replace your gas cap first. And and then if that doesn't fix your issue, you're going to have to go with the purge valve. Now, most of the time, these two parts are going to fix your issues. Let's just say in case that does not do it. Now, well, the next thing you want to check is going to be your EVAP system hoses. Make sure they're not ripped, they don't have any holes or any leaks on them. Next, you want to check your fuel filler neck. You want to check that it doesn't have any ribs, tears, or any holes. Make sure the clamps are secure and all that stuff. If everything looks fine, then the last thing you want to check is going to be your fuel tank sending unit, o-ring, or gasket, whatever you have make sure it doesn't smell like fuel if you do smell like fuel that might be your issue most of the time your code is gonna go away with replacing the fuel cap or replacing the vapor canister perch valve so now that I showed you how to replace the fuel cap I will show you how to replace the canister perch valve before we start unplugging stuff and unscrewing stuff you're gonna have to remove the negative terminal of the battery this is just to prevent any electrical issues now next you're gonna remove your engine cover And you're gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna loosen up the clamp that's holding the intake hose in place now I forgot to show this in the video but there's gonna be another 10 millimeter screw holding the intake hose once you're done unscrewing those you're gonna be able to remove the intake hose now the canister purge valve is gonna be right behind ignition coil number two and number three and then there's gonna be a big piece of foam it's up to you if you want to cut it in my case I ended up cutting it because I didn't want to disconnect the fuel line Now once you remove it, you're going to be able to see the canister perch valve. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to unplug it. Now make sure you pull the white clip on it, if not you won't be able to unplug it. To remove the hose on your left hand side, you're going to have to grab the clip and squeeze it from both sides. And then just give it a light pull and it should unplug from the canister perch valve. Now the other side of the hose, you just gonna have to pull it. Give it a little bit of arm, make sure you do not rip the hose. The canister perch valve is out. It's time to grab our new canister perch valve. Plug in the hose on the right side first, then plug in the hose on the left side. Now I forgot to mention this again. Now there's gonna be a flat piece of metal that that's where the canister perch valve is supposed to sit. Make sure it won't get loose, then plug it in and you want to repeat the process backwards. Put in your foam, put 
put your intake hose, make sure the clamp is tight, make sure you put your other 10mm screw on the other end, plug in your intake temperature sensor, put your engine cover back on, and finally connect the battery and you are practically done replacing your canister patch valve got it now i know i have the trunk open and i have the hood open but you want to go in your car once you're done with everything make sure everything's plugged in make sure your battery is plugged in make sure all the sensors are plugged in and you want to start your car and you shouldn't be having any lights coming on or any warnings saying that the gas cap's loose got it as you can see no light has come on meaning we're all good to go now guys thank you for watching until next time if you have any other issues please let me know and have a blessed day